Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 12 of the Endless Runner series. In this episode we will create the game HUD that will display the coins count and in the next episodes the lives count and the pause game button. We will start by creating a Blueprints widget class, laying out the HUD items, then create a C++ class and bind those widget elements to it. Defining a custom event in the game mode that the HUD will register, a function for, so that once a coin is collected, the event will fire and the HUD will update the coins count. So let's get started. So in the editor, let's start by creating our widget class. Like I mentioned a few episodes back when we created the animation blueprint, where I said that it's best to create the blueprint class first and then the C++ class and reparent it to the blueprint class. The same problem we have here with UMG, so that if we create a C++ class first and then based on that create the blueprint, we will get issues with the widgets or we the graph won't be visible where we can create the elements and stuff. So first we are going to create now the, the widget class, then the C++ class and reparent it. So let's create under user interface widget blueprint, call it, let's say game hut, open it up. And in here we need to add items to the canvas. So we need a text item and we need an image. So let's put the image in here and put a text in here. We will rename it to coin image and this one is important, the text which will be called coins count. And we click on this checkbox to make it a variable. This is important because when we create a C++ class later on, we bind this item in our C++ class so that when this item changes in C++, it automatically updates in the HUD itself. So let's move it to over here. This is the text. Let's call it, let's say, count 17 so that we can see if we don't initialize it later on, that we can still see the values there. Then the image, the image itself has a brush. We change it to the coin UI and make the size 80 by 80 and anchor it to the top right. The same goes for the coins count. Let's change the font to 45, make it a little bit bigger, adjust the values here and have the alignment or justification to the right and set it up here and also add the anchor to the top right. So compile, save. Now we have created our game hut. And what we can do now is in our game mode, create this game HUD, initialize it and add it to the viewport. So let's get into our code first. So in the game mode, we will create the widget class and add it to the viewport. And to be able to do this, we need to find out or we need the actual class for it. Like we have with the floor tile class, we need something for the widget. So let's copy this for config make a T or copy this as well, T subclass off. And what it's called is a U user widget. And we call it hot or game hot class. So we have defined our game hot class of U user widget. Now we need to forward declare user widget. And for this to compile, there's one more thing we need to do. The UMG system is its own module. So we need to make sure that the classes that we use here can be found so that our module is kind of like included in our build. So wh what we need to do is change our endless runner build.cs and you can see the public dependency module names that are used for this project like core, core U object engine, 
what we need to do is also to include UMG and then just add this text after this module name. So, and later on, there will be many more modules like networking, like other stuff, AI. If you're using this in C++, you need to add those modules. And what you can do is if you look at the engine, here you can see all those kind of like modules that are part of Unreal and so on. So this is actually how you can then specify which module you're using. And if we now close this and compile this, it should be able to find the user widget and compile fine. And it did. So let's get over to our editor first, open up our game mode and under game hot class, add our game hot compile, save and but before we go back to our code and add it to the viewport and create it, let's create our C++ base class for it. So we right click new class, show all classes and type in user widget. You can find it here. Click next and call it game hot widget or just game hot. The class was created, but let's go to back to our game hut and use the naming conventions and call it widget underscore game hut so that we can differentiate between the actual widget and the C++ class. So let's go back to our code. Let's open up our game hut and let's hook up bind our widget items. So make this protected. and a U property, blueprint read write. And this is something now which is specific for UMG for binding the elements. There is a meta tag that we use, meta equals parentheses and then say bind widget. And now we can specify our elements what we had was a text element, which is in C++ called uTextPlock pointer, and we call it coins count. And th the thing is, this name here has to be the same name. Let's go back to our widget class, the same name that we gave it here in this text. And if not, and we can, I can show it to you in a second when we reparent it, that then there will be an error if we bind a widget that is not available with the same name in that widget class. So let's go back here. So coins count, bind widget, and we don't need the image. If you want to change the image later on dynamically and stuff, you can add all those different elements. But for this here, we only need the coins count. Let's compile this, go back to our widget class and if we go to the graph you can see actually here game hut under variables we have the image and the coin count coins count now if we reparent it to our class so go under file reparent blueprint and choose our game hut you can see now that this element is gone so it actually saw it as or found it in the C++ class that it's a that's binded to it. If we, for example, go back to designer and let's say we add or change this name, compile it, then you can see there's an error. And in the compiler results, it says a required widget binding coins count of type text was not found. So this is how it works with C++ and widgets. You specify a bind widget with the code and the name has to be the same as the one that you're using in here. So if we change this back to coins count, compile it and then it compiles perfectly and works. So now we have hooked up our C++ class and to the actual widget blueprint. And now it's time to create it in the game mode and add it to the viewport. Let's go back to our code, minimize this, go to our game mode base. So we have the game hot class and we need another property, make it visible instance only and call category equals runtime, for example. 
and this will be a reference to the HUD that we are creating. So you game HUD pointer and we call it game HUD. And in the CPP file in our begin play, let's start by enabling our mouse cursor. So this can be done with the U gameplay statics get player controller get world zero for the first one and then we can say b show mouse cursor equals true so the player controller has a boolean value that you can set that shows the mouse cursor or hides it and then now we create our hut so game hut equals we need to cast it to our U game hut and the way to create widgets now is to use a function create widget and we call it call get world and specify the widget class that we defined so it's game hut class the create widget function is a global function that is part of the blueprint user widget.h file so we created our game hut now what we can do is use check again because this is really essential this is an essential class that without it, it doesn't make sense that the game runs so if somehow the cast and the create widget failed then the application crashes and we can exactly see where it happened and fix the issues so now we created our widget but this widget doesn't yet appear in the viewport we need to add it first. And there is a function in the widget game hut and it's called add to viewport. You might have seen that in blueprints. If you work with blueprints, it's the same functionality, adding widgets that are created to the viewport. And this should run. So let's compile this and test this out. Let's go back to our editor, hit play. And you can see here that our icon and the text is appearing. Let's stop this. But you saw that the count was still not initialized to zero. And of course, we are lacking the feature right now for each collected coin to change the value. And this is something that we are going to do now. So for this to work, what we are doing is we create events. Or let me show you for one second first in our widget class that usually when you have text like this, what you can do is bind the text to a function that you can create a binding that works basically if something happens, this binding or to a value. And if the value is changed, like our coins count in the game mode, for example, that this widget could be automatically updated. But this is not a good way to do it because this is updated every tick and cost performance and stuff. So if you have tons of elements and they are binded to values and stuff, it's going to be problematic. So the better solution is to use event based systems so that only when like we collect a coin, then this value should be updated. And for this, we are creating in the game mode an event, a custom multicast event, which the widget class will bind to, a function in the widget class, bind to the event. And then once we, once the add coin function is called, we will broadcast this event or fire out this event so that then the widget class can update itself with the value passed in from the event. <laughs> this sounds a bit more complicated than it is. So let's just start by creating our event class. And we will do this underneath our forward declaration and above the U class, we need to declare a specific or call a specific macro, which is called declare underscore dynamic dynamic underscore multicast delegate and which has one parameter. Now, what we need to do is first specify the name for the event. So usually these start with F on, let's call it on coins count changed. 
then the signature, like you've seen in the other episodes where we bind functions to, they had like a signature. Then when we tried to bind a function, it needed the same signature as the one specified for the event. So, and we are specifying our own signature. It's in 32 and these are separated by commas. So the first is the type, the second is the name, call it coins count. And this is how you specify a dynamic multicast event. Now for it to work, we can use this like any property. So what we will do is let's say define a U property here, call it U property. And there's a special specifier called blueprint assignable so that these events can also be assigned in blueprints, blueprint callable and give it a category of delegates. And now we use the F on coins count changed type and call it on coins count changed. So this is how events work. You first declared with that dynamic multicast delegate. There are also other delegates that only work in C++. Only the dynamic multicast delegates, they kind of work with C++ and blueprints. And multicast means that you can add several functions or bind several functions to it. And then there are also like single delegate event types that you can only add one function to. But this is not part of what we're covering here. So we're using this and specifying our property here. And now what we need to do is for the widget class to be able to call on coins count change dot add dynamic and then add its function to. So for this to work in our game hut, we kind of like need a function. We create a public section and in here we create a u function, make it blueprint callable, void initialize Hut. And we pass it the a endless runner game mode base pointer to it and call it run game mode. Then we implement the function. And what we also need is another u function it can also be blueprint callable. And we say set coins count and this is the function that meets the same signature like our event that we specified so in 32 and say coins count or we'll call it just count because we specified our coins count text block and we can't use the same name in our definition down here so let's implement this and let's implement the initialize function first so we are checking if run game mode is actually valid. Usually it should be valid, but let's check this for now. And one thing we can do first now is initialize our count. So we say coins count dot set text. And what writer did again was include automatically the components text block dot h. So most user widgets classes that you're using, you can find them in the, under components and then text block image and so on and so forth. And this text block, it has a set text function that we can use to set its value. And most widget classes, they don't use strings or F names. They use F text because F text supports localization and so on. So this is why many elements, they use the F text. And to convert a number like our, what we are having here, it's a text, it's not a number. So we need to convert like zero to that text. And there's a static function in F text you can use f text colon colon there you have several things as percent as time and you can say as number and you specify zero so we initialize it to zero and next time we will see the coins count has initial value of zero and then what we can do is say run game mode now we need to call the on coins count changed. And like you've seen in previous episodes with the way of adding dynamic functions to these events, we call dot add dynamic, then specify this and 
pass in a reference to our game hut set coins count function. So once this event is fired, it will call this function here. And what we need to do in here is set the coins count to the account that is passed in. So similar to this, let's copy this. And instead of putting in zero, we add the count. And what we can do here is make a const out of it. So the way this works in initialize, we're setting our function to the event so that once the event is fired, these functions get notified that are added. So we can have another class somewhere that may want to do something when a coin is collected. So many classes can then register their functions to this event and can act on it once it's broadcast or fired. Now that we've set up our game hut here, one thing that we need to do is just fire the event, which is called broadcasting. So in our game mode base, of course, there's another thing we need to do. We need to call game hut initialize hut with our game mode. So we need to initialize it first that it can register the function and really work. And then in our add coin, you can see here we have our total coins. We can remove this now and do our on coins count change dot broadcast and pass in our total coins. And this should actually be it and should work. So let's compile and find out. Let's head over to our editor, hit play. You can see it's zero. And let's start collecting and you can see collecting works, updating our coin count. Of course, now we restart the level after we die. This is something we will change in probably not the next video, but the video after that, where we create lives and be able to restart where we left off with our game count and have lives. And if we die three times, for example, then we get a game over screen and so on. For now, I think this is it. The HUD update works. You can now see the coin count updating. And this is it for this episode. So thank you for watching. I hope you really liked this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will gladly answer them. And please like, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when new episodes are coming out. This would really help me. So thanks again and see you in the next one.